to another episode of the Wooly Ramblings podcast. My name is Nicole and this is a video podcast where I chat about my fiber arts crafting, primarily knitting and spinning, though sometimes other fiber crafts that I'm dabbling in as well. I also am a shepherd to a flock of Romney and Horn Dorset sheep, so I often talk about the sheep and the fiber that they produce here on this podcast as well. If you are a returning viewer, thank you so much for joining me again, and if you're new, welcome. I hope you will spend a little bit of time with me today. Today's episode should be a bit shorter than last uh, episode, but I still think it's a pretty well-rounded episode. We've got a finished object, we have progress on a whip, we've got some spinning to talk about this episode, some modest acquisitions, and some chit-chat. Um, about a fiber festival that I went to a couple weekends ago and some projects that I've really want, been wanting to get working on and we'll wrap it up with my current dilemma of what to cast on next. So if any of that sounds up your alley, I hope you'll grab a cup of something, your current work in progress, and join me for a little bit in all the fibery chat. So let's start out with the finished object. So I have completed my cable trellis pillow. I showed this to you in the last episode and I was about one chart repeat from being done. And you can see it here in all its glory on its pillow form. It has turned out really nice and I'm really loving how well you can see it on camera. Um, this is a pattern that I got out of the Knit Picks Wood Smoke Cable Collection. This particular pattern was uh, designed by Emily Kintai, and it's a pretty simple pattern. Um, there's not too much that I want to s need or want to say about this pillow. Um, but as you can see, it's this repeated textured cable pattern on the back of the pillow is just stockinette. Um, so you don't have to knit the entire pillow cover in the cable. It's just the front part that you'll be seeing. Um, I knit this out of our own farm yarn. This is the Covered Bridge Farm Rex's Lambs Wool. I talked about this yarn in the last episode. Um, I'm going to call it a worsted. I think we're going to call it a worsted. Even though it was intended to be a DK, I'm, I'm feeling it's a worsted. I knit this on size 6, um, US size 6 needles but um, the pattern called, I think, for them to be on size seven, but the fabric on this is really nice. It's not too dense, um, and I think it turned out really well. This pillow is a 16 by 16 inch pillow. I have it on just a standard 16 by 16 pillow form that you could get at any local craft store. I actually got mine at Walmart. <laughs> um, I had kind of wanted to put a higher quality pillow form in this guy, but I really wanted to get it on um, in pillow form and so I just went ahead and got a really affordable one from Walmart. <laughs> uh, let's see, this pattern is knit in the round so you knit a tube and then you block it and you sew up each of your ends of your pillow. I know some people on Ravelry had done things where they created a button flap so that you could easily change your pillow cover in and out as you wanted to, which I didn't really care for the look of it, but it was a very um, smart idea to a way to do that. I just sewed it, and if I decide that I want to change the pillow form or I want to restuff it, um, I'll just unstitch it and go from there. You probably, if you were um, ambitious enough, you could probably actually put a zipper in the top or the bottom, and that way you could have easy access to it as well. Um, so I'm wanting to cast on a second pillow because um, this is intended to be some couch pillows for my couch, but 
I'm not sure if I'm ready to cast this on yet again. Um, I just got done with it. Do I want to start another one? Um, especially as the days are getting warmer, this is a really nice woolly wool. And while I generally don't split my knitting into summer knits and fall winter knits, I don't do that. I just kind of knit fall winter knits all the time. Uh, I could tell we had some hot days when I was finishing this and I could tell that it made my hands a little sweaty and that maybe I wouldn't enjoy it as much um, now that summer is right around the corner. So we will see what I decide to do. So I'll give you a final look at this guy. So here it is in all its glory. The back, just some standard stockinette. You can see my, just how it's sewn up. So, there is the cable trellis pillow. Highly recommend, really simple. Um, it wasn't the type of charted pattern that you could memorize necessarily. Maybe um, somebody with better uh, memory than myself uh, would be able to, but it was kind of a, pattern that once you got on that row you really quickly remembered what you were doing for the entire row um so but yeah okay let's move on to my whip so my whip after last episode i felt really inspired to work on my zawag sweater and i have made some progress on it it might not seem like a lot, but I have made some progress on it. So let's see, this is the back, I think. So here it is. And it, it doesn't look like I've done much. <laughs> so, but we're gonna talk about what I've done and some of my thought process on this pattern. So in the last episode, I had talked to you guys about how I had run out of the contrast color and so I was just going to leave it um, with the bars and not have this solid stripe um, there at the bottom. Well, I kind of got thinking about it and I kind of decided that mm, I, I kind of wanted the full finished Zweig um, pattern for the yoke. And so what I decided to do was to um, shorten the bar columns um, here. So I decreased them by, or I reduced them by three rows. So instead of being nine rows, they are six rows. And then I added the solid band on the bottom just to complete the pattern. I was kind of thinking about it as I was working on this that I probably somewhere have a little tiny bit of this color left somewhere because when I had knit it the first time, I had a little bit left over. I don't know where that is, so I just said, We'll just forget it. It's lost. It'll show up someday. <laughs> so then since then, I have separated for the sleeves. And I have knit um, so about a chart repeat of the body X pattern. I call them little Xs. Um, they're little cables that go all over the body and the arms. Now, here's where I am at as far as where I'm going from here. I kind of hope to have this all put together because like I said in the last episode, I still have the bottom half of the body from when I first knit um, the body. Oops, I'm losing all my stitches. Okay, we'll deal with that later. So here it is. And I don't know if lighting's really gonna be able to show you. So here's the body, the rest of the body. And I was hoping I would have had this all uh, grafted on together and ready to go but as i was knitting the um top the yoke again and this bottom piece right here i started debating if the colors were going to be there's going to be a big block of dark in the middle of the sweater if you haven't watched past episodes what happened with this yarn is that i originally purchased two color or two skeins of the main body color and one skein of the contrast color and then why on earth I thought that was enough to make a sweater I don't know but I um, 
actually my mom because she actually bought the same yarn um, which was really funny uh, we were not shopping together mind you <laughs> anyways um, we got some more yarn uh, dye the uh, dyer kindly dyed us some more yarn she didn't have any in stock but the dye lots were really drastically different so the dye lot, the new dye lot was a lot lighter than the original dye lot and so I have been alternating skeins now on the first time round through the sweater I kind of commented that I really guess didn't do a very good job of picking out um, two skeins that had enough contrast because it's pretty dark um, and so what I'm worried about you can see it right there that this I have I'm now working on the same skeins that I was working on at the bottom of this sweater and you can see how it's a lot more variegated and striped going on so that's now the top two so I'm worried there's gonna be this big chunk of darkness in the middle of this sweater so what I'm thinking I'm going to do is that I'm going to rip back I really don't want to rip all this back but I might rip all this back to just where that striping begins and um, variegate it um, through the rest of the body M maybe doing it more like I'm alternating with three skeins instead of just two skeins um, so that is where I'm at now I didn't talk about what the yarn was the last episode so I'm going to quickly mention that so this yarn in this that I'm using in this pattern is the teal torch knits DK and in her colorways the main color is high queen Margot and then the contrasting color is dangerously happy which has all these speckles going on so you can kind of see so and there maybe you can see my variegated so that's kind of where I'm at with this sweater. I haven't really decided what I'm going to do yet. I kind of thought about just going with it and putting it on, but then I didn't think I was going to be really happy with that. So I have kind of paused to think about that for a little bit. So hopefully by next episode, I will have come to a decision on that and there'll be some progress. So that is all my knitting content for today's episode, but I am going to talk about spinning today because I've done a little bit of spinning since we last chatted. I have finally finished the bat that I've been working on for ages. So this was, I'm just looking at my notes, this was a two ounce bat from Wandering Pines Ranch in the colorway Painted Clouds. And it is a, a bat that uh, contained Cordale, Merino, Silk, and Stellina, and was this white and pink uh, colored bat. And I hate to give a negative review but I did not like spinning this yarn. It was a really tough spin for me and for a lot of reasons. So I had a very particular idea of what I wanted to do when I started spinning this yarn. So my plan was to spin this yarn as fine as I possibly could. And I think I did a decent job. I wasn't trying to go for like cobweb or anything, but I was trying to stretch that two ounce bat as far as I could because I wasn't going to get another bat. Now, um, here are my thoughts on this uh, bat. So what I think part of the problem was is that this bat was a layered bat. So on the bottom was a layer of Cordale. Then on top of it was the Merino, Silk, and Stellina. So they were sitting on top. So you'd have white on the bottom and the pink color on the top. The fiber lengths of the bat did not match. The Cordale was a very different length than the Merino and it just really it made spinning very difficult because you had to adjust your um, drafting a lot more um, 
throughout the spin you couldn't like zone out because it could change in an instant depending on how the fiber fed into you the wheel and so that was one thing that I had really was really frustrating I think that maybe the bat would have been more enjoyable to spin if the fibers had been blended together I know it wouldn't have created that really pretty look in the packaging but I think it maybe would have been easier for me to spin if it had been incorporated more. The second thing that I found really frustrating with this fiber was that I believe it was the Cordale specifically that was on the bottom. It was sticky. And I don't know if it was lanolin, I don't know if it was some sort of prepping oils. But it was sticky and after a while I would have to get up and wash my hands to be able to continue spinning it because my fingers would start sticking to the fibers and it made it again I was having a hard time drafting and getting an even yarn so I had really wanted this to be a really even yarn um, it's really bumpy and has tufts that are thicker and then another thing that I think there was something going on with the Cordell that there were, it constantly uh, created these little nips and I would get these little balls of fiber and I don't really think they were actually second cuts it would just ball up um, as I was spinning so maybe it was inconsistency in fiber length in the Cordale by itself so with all that being said I am very happy to be done with this at that and I think you'll probably see more spinning content from me because this is now done uh, really it was a frustrating spin for me so now I have moved on to the uh, what I'm going to be plying with this yarn so like I said I had a pretty specific vision for what I was spinning I'm not a technical spinner I don't do the math I don't do any of that but I had a vision in mind. So now I have moved on to, it's got fiber everywhere. I've just started, like I barely have any on this bobbin. But I will be, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. come on, focus. There we go. I am spinning a white yarn to go with this pink uh, yarn. So this is 100% Romney wool. This is from our farm. So I am spinning uh, some roving from one of our ewes, Lydia. This is a white, again, like I said, 100% white Romney. And it has been just a little bit that I have spun so far. It has just been so nice and so relaxing of a spin compared to what I've been spinning with that bat. And so I'm really happy to be working on this. So I'm spinning this at a heavier weight than the pink uh, fiber. So I kind of wanted the, um, to kind of have almost a very subtle arty yarn type look without it being too um, out there. And plus I wanted this to be a heavier yarn and I'm just trying to stretch uh, two ounces. This is four ounces. I don't know if I'll use all of this. Um, we'll see. Originally I had wanted to use this yarn in a sweater for my little girl. Of course that was before she was even born um, and now she's a year and so I don't think this will be enough to knit anything for her by itself. At least not a sweater wise. I might be able to do something like knitting the body in this combo that I'm creating and then doing white sleeves or depending on how much I have maybe uh, white cuffs um, we'll see we'll see what uh, I finally decide on once I finish this yarn so that is what I've been spinning I tend to spin when I'm at fiber festivals because I don't really have to think I can get up easily um, so that's um, where um, I was spinning so that is all of my works in progress. I don't have any other work, uh, whips to talk about today. So we are going to move on to acquisitions. So as I've kind of mentioned here and there already, 
I went to my first fiber festival of the season and I got a few things. I got some very modest acquisitions and so I thought I'd share. So I only got one little bit of yarn and I will show that to you now. This is some Shetland yarn to add to my collection of Shetland yarn that I've been chatting with you about. This is from Roger Family's Farm, Ian Mill, and this is from the Shetland sheep called Brown Betty. And this is a mini skein, obviously. <laughs> and I'm not really sure if it's actually going to be enough for a color in my sweater that I'm hoping to uh, knit. This is, and this is not as a fine of a spin as the other yarn, let me grab it, that I'm adding it to. Let's see if you can kind of, so there you can kind of see that to focus there. Um, but you can see it's the first brown. I'll probably do a lot of shades of brown with this sweater, I'm thinking. Uh, like I said in last episode, I'm kind of going for an autumnal uh, coloring. So the yarn is not as fine or as consistent. So I'm hoping it will be okay. It also appears to be maybe a... I'm not very good with my... I, I believe it's a woolen spun. So it's kind of fuzzier compared to these other skeins. So we'll see. I hope it goes okay. I hope there's enough to do one of the colors um, in the sweater that I'm wanting to. We will have to see. Um, something unique about this yarn is that this is um, hand rude. So Roger Family Farm rues all of their Shetland fiber. So ruing is the removal of fiber from a sheep, uh, mainly the Shetlands and primitive breeds that still have the natural ability to shed their fleece. Um, most domestic sheep no longer can shed their fleece. They have to be shorn, otherwise it will just grow indefinitely. Now, uh, these primitive breeds that many of these sheep are descended from originally would have um, had a rise in their fleece is what it's called, I think and where the fiber would break and the fleece would shed off and that's how the sheep would naturally remove the wool from its body so not many breeds do that and not many shetland breeders uh rue their sheep it's a very time intensive uh, process to peel off the fleece off the sheep um so yeah that's something pretty unique about this yarn. So I'm going to give you hopefully a better view of it. So, really... so it's a nice chocolatey brown. So that's the only fiber that I actually got at this event. Um, the other, I got some soap. I'm not going to show you the soap because, um, you can't smell it and what fun is that <laughs> but I got some soap from Celestial Farms and then I got some buttons so these are buttons from Favor Valley Woodworking I'm gonna put their information there on the screen I don't know if this is gonna be this first or not and they make handmade buttons out of wood and antlers primarily and I have been um, trying to build up my button stash because I don't have a button stash. Uh, I've always kind of dived into my mom's button stash and I don't really have my own. So I got myself three cards of buttons that I'm going to show you and Favor Valley Woodworking um, is here in Oregon but they originally I believe were in New Hampshire so if you are from the uh, East Coast you may have seen them at like the New Hampshire Sheep and Wool Festival um, and places like that um, 
So these are the, I'll put them sideways, I think. They're the first buttons I got. And these are um, made out of yew wood. There's those. And I got the medium size um, on the wood ones. And these ones, and I had a really hard time picking out um, which buttons I wanted. There were so many that I liked, and I really debated on size and all that. I just ultimately decided to go with the medium and smalls because um, I have some large buttons in my collection that are quite large, and then some that I think are maybe a little bit larger than these that are some like pewter silver type uh, style buttons so I felt like I needed some buttons in these size I felt like these could potentially be buttons that would work for kids um, outfits that I could use for the kids and not just for me like some of those large buttons are too large I could never use them on a child's garment but I think these I could use on a child's garment if I wanted to uh, this one I just showed you is maple wood there were some large ones on this one that I was debating on um, that they were a little bit more um, rustic shape they weren't as round and then the last one I got was some moose antler buttons and these are the small size and there's only two on this card and I really liked the variegation on the coloring and because they're moose antlers they actually made me think of a friend who is currently living in Alaska and they just made me think of her so I that was part of the reason I got these too so those are what I got at the Fatland Fiber Festival so let's go ahead and transition in to the ramblings chit chat segment of this episode um, I'm going to start out by transitioning from our acquisitions right into uh, chit chat about the first fiber festival that we attended. Um, so we attended the Fatland Fiber Festival May 20th and 21st in our hometown of Sayo. And this is a very small fiber gathering that takes place the third weekend in May annually. And this was um, the Fatland Fiber Festival is a part of the Lynn County Lamb and Wolf Fair, which is a community festival that has taken place since the 1930s and um, historically we had a very big focus on sheep and wool. And uh, so the Fatland Fiber Festival is the fiber portion that we are trying to maintain that historical element of the Lynn County Lamb and Wolf Fair. And so it's a really small fiber gathering. I think we had about 16 vendors, a sheep to shawl demonstration done by the Aurora Colony Guild. We had, what else did we have? Oh, we had a fleece sale and um, music, spinning, and on Saturday we had sheep milk ice cream. And this is the very first time I have tried sheep milk ice cream. And so I was really excited to uh, try it. So I thought I would tell you a little bit about that. So I'm repping the uh, uh, business who that came and brought their little ice cream truck. And that is Dreamy's Creamery. Dreamy's Creamery is out of Dallas, Oregon. And they are a family owned uh, ice cream <laughs> parlor um, and food truck. Um, they're opening their first parlor. I, they don't have a release date, but they're opening their first official parlor in Dallas um, very soon. And so they, um, their milk uh, is 100% sheep milk that is sourced from, uh, originally it came off of the Oregon coast, but then uh, they, um, the original dairy sold and the sheep are now actually up in Dallas um, close to Dreamy's, Dreamy's Creamery and this was their very first fiber festival of them attending uh, a fiber festival and like 
how logical to have sheet milk ice cream at a fiber festival. <laughs> and sheet milk ice cream is a really interesting um, animal milk. It is lactose intolerant friendly. So if you suffer from lactose intolerance and you can't tolerate cow's milk, you are, have a very good chance of being able to tolerate sheep's milk. Um, sheep milk has does have lactose, but it's a much uh, lower level of lactose. And sheep milk uh, naturally is homogenized, which helps um, make digestion easier. And I'd actually heard a couple people um, at the festival say that they normally could not have ice cream and they were there the whole day and that they hadn't had a problem, which was really cool. Um, let's see, I have some other sheep facts that I thought I, sheep milk facts that I thought I would share with you. Um, it tastes similar as a cow milk, which I can attest to. This is the closest um, milk that tastes um, like cow's milk. And it definitely was so. It was a little bit different, but it, you really, um, it did not have a different taste. Uh, especially if you have had goat's milk before. I've never had goat's milk, but um, supposedly goat's milk can have kind of a goaty flavor. Um, you don't get that type of thing with sheep's milk. Um, sheep's milk has two times the protein, the vitamins, and calcium that other milks do. So it's really um, packed with a lot of good things for you. So it was quite an experience. Um, and they were really busy the whole time that we were there. So what are my thoughts on sheep milk ice cream? I tried, I think I ended up trying three different flavors. Um, and... They were all very good, and I could highly recommend uh, trying Sheep's Milk Ice Cream. It was very creamy. Um, all of their ice cream that they make, uh, Dreamy's Creamy makes gluten-free ice cream. So things like cookie dough, um, it's gluten-free friendly. And um, it, was, it was really good. And I brought home, um, you could bring home pint size, and so I brought home some pint sizes uh, for my husband. And... He tried it and he thought it was good too and we're already planning that when they open their parlor that we're going to go up and uh, maybe not necessarily for the grand opening but we're going to go up there and we're going to go visit the parlor and get some ice cream. They also make uh, like sam uh, ice cream sandwiches and stuff as well and hopefully um, they will be joining us at some other fiber festivals. Uh, we shared with them a little bit about other fiber festivals that they thought we thought they might enjoy going to. So hopefully we'll be seeing them at places like Black Sheep Gathering and Oregon Flock and Fiber in the future. And they are excited to come back to Fatland Fiber Festival. So um, let's see, is there anything else I wanted to share? Um, it was, I always love going to fiber festivals. Um, so we also vend, um, so we have our farm booth, and um, always have a lot of fun going to fiber festivals. We do vend at pretty much all the fiber festivals we attend, uh, so I get to uh, chat with all of you guys and do my own spinning, do my own shopping. It's a lot of it's a lot of fun. Um, and then, of course, in uh, a lot of other future fiber festivals, we bring the sheep, too. So the sheep are right there with us. Uh, so, yeah, I don't think there's too much more I, I was going to want to share. The sheep milk ice cream was, like, the main thing I was wanting to share with you guys. Um, highly recommend if you can get your hands on some sheep milk ice cream to try it out and see what you think. Um, I really uh, recommend Dreamy's Creamery if you're here in Oregon. And... Um, so give it a try. <laughs> it was really good. Uh, I'm going to include some footage at the end of this video with um, of the Fiber Festival so you can kind of come along and enjoy all the fibery uh, goodness that was at the Fiber Festival. Um, so let's move on to some patterns that I've been feeling inspired by. So um, I'm going to try to put them up somewhere here on the screen um, except one of them so I guess I'm only going to put one up on the screen if I can figure out how to do that and um, so I'm going the first one that I wanted to share with you was the anemone 
by Pernille Larson. Uh, this is a pattern that was recently released by Knitting for Olive. And I saw it when they first shared a picture of it on Instagram and I knew I had to knit it. It's this really sweet uh, child's pullover um, that has flowers, stripes of flowers, uh, color work flowers all over it. And I think it's got like a folded uh, neckline and um, like I said, just rows of little sweet flowers all over it. And I knew I wanted to knit that for my daughter. So I originally thought that I was going to use some mini skeins that I have in my stash. But unfortunately, when I went into my stash, there was um, not enough skeins that were fingering weight. In fact, I don't think any of the ones, maybe one skein was fingering weight. And um, so I don't have the yarn, right yarn for this. Now, recently, Woolly Mammoth, um, Emma of Woolly Mammoth Fiber uh, Company, uh, dyed some really, really pretty yarn that was uh, colors that I felt would be just so perfect for this sweater. And they were these kind of peachy, pinky, orangey uh, tones. And I was kind of hopeful that she would do like a mini skein set of those, but she uh, has done some other minis uh, this last time, her last update and um, but they weren't quite the colors that I was looking for so I'm kind of tempted to try to um, replicate that vibe um, that she had those warm peachy tones obviously I won't get it exactly because she's using natural dyes and she has lots of talent and um, practice at creating these uh, colors so Mine probably won't turn out quite that way, but I'm thinking about maybe uh, dyeing some yarn specifically for this sweater um, for my daughter. Uh, so that's the first sweater. Um, the second pattern that I wanted to mention is the Afton Soul by Wench uh, Rolled. I think that's how I don't know if I'm saying that right, but it is a Norwegian pattern. It's from the same company as my, um, and the other sweater I knit for my husband. And this is a sweater that I want to knit for my husband, which is why I'm not showing it on screen because he does listen and watch to the podcast. Um, so hi honey, I'm not letting you see the sneak peek. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> uh, I wanted to do the full 10 yards though with this sweater. I wanted to prep the fiber from a fleece, spin it, dye it, knit it. So I have the fleece and I have a little bit of work started on it, um, but I have not uh, gone ahead and um, done any more work on it and I'm really, I'm kind of, I'm really wanting to work on that sweater. I think that maybe once I'm done with this spinning that I'm currently doing, that maybe that'll be something you'll be seeing in the future. Like I said, I don't love um, <laughs> fiber prep. Uh, I don't mind washing it, but I am terrible at carding it or processing it to be ready to spin. So those are kind of two projects that I feel really inspired by that I really want to cast on. So finally, let's just move into my last chit chat that I wanted to talk about, which is what to cast on next. <laughs> so I thought I knew, I thought I had a plan and my plan didn't quite work out. So I kind of talked about in last episode that I was looking um, after uh, finishing my nurtured sweater that I had some specific ideas of what I wanted for my next cast on sweater. And so I had found a pattern. I didn't write down the name so I can't tell you what it is, but um, that I really thought was going to be perfect. And then I started looking at it more and I decided it wasn't so perfect. So I am looking for a simple sweater um, that is no patterning, nothing really hard on it. Now I kind of wanted it to be a little, have a little something special to it and not just be a like no frills sweater or any of um, thing similar because I'm wanting to knit with um, this yarn. So this is, it's not quite this dark in real life, but 
It's a Green Mountain Spinnery um, Lana Base yarn. I think the color is Ancho. And I picked this up in, yes, Ancho. Uh, Ancho 9097. And um, it's a two ply fingering weight, 100% fine wool. And I purchased this in Wisconsin in 2019. Yeah, 2019. And so I'm. I want, I want to knit something with this. and But because it was a special purchase, I very specifically went and found Green Mountain Spinnery because we do not get Green Mountain Spinnery out here on the West Coast. And so I feel like it needs to be something a little more special than a no frills. So I had found a sweater that it was kind of an oversized sweater and it had these like pleated sleeves. So you had almost like a puff sleeve going on. But when I actually looked at the pattern on Real People, I go through Ravelry projects, I didn't really like how it looked on Real People <laughs> that weren't the model. And so I kind of was like, oh, maybe I don't want to knit that pattern. And I haven't really been able to find a pattern that works. I have a pattern from Green Mountain Spinnery that was designed um, in this yarn base and has the it's actually using this color it's a yoke sweater with that's like a textured yoke so i kind of was thinking maybe i would go ahead and do that one but i'm not 100 percent sure on what i want to do so then i was like <laughs> i was thinking maybe i will do a different sweater that i have the yarn for so i have some yarn some very messy yarn from Magpie Fibers and I purchased this in 2018 in Texas in Mc at the McKinney Yarn Shop. I can't remember that that was actually its name but um, this is their Selkie or no this is their Solstice no okay yes <laughs> it is their Solstice Magpie Fibers Solstice DK which you can no longer get um, which was a 50% uh, superwash merino, 25% cotton, and 25% silk. And when I originally got this yarn, I didn't have a plan. But then after browsing Ravelry, I decided to do a Jennifer Steingast pattern. Uh, Ventrasol? Ventrasol, I think is the one that I was going to do. And I... Um, now I'm not sure I want to do that pattern anymore. That's been so long since I've done, uh, got that uh, pattern and got this yarn, and I don't really feel like it's quite maybe what I want anymore. I don't know. Um, now that I have the yarn, oh, for a while I was worrying it was maybe the colors, but now that I have the colors like right here by my face, I don't really feel like it's not the colors. So maybe I just haven't find the, found the right sweater. Maybe I've kind of outgrown that sweater and I need a different sweater. So I don't know. So that's my dilemma. I'm wanting a pattern for either this yarn. I only have these three colors. Or for this yarn. And I'm wanting, um, like I said, I had wanted something simple uh, to kind of refresh my palette. Plus give myself a nice basic sweater in my wardrobe. But at the same time, I not sure that this is the yarn for that sweater so anyways those are my dilemmas if you have pattern suggestions ideas that you would like to leave in the comments i would appreciate that greatly um so yeah so that kind of wraps up today's episode i hope you have enjoyed hanging out with me a little bit today um be sure to give this video a like, uh, subscribe, subscribe if you'd like to see more content from me, and um, feel free to follow me on Instagram or on Facebook as uh, Covered Bridge Farm. Um, I post over there a lot about the sheep. I did not do a sheep update today, um, mainly because lambs are growing happily and is kind of right now we're in this period of um, letting things be. <laughs> Lambs are growing well and they're learning to eat solids and um, that's kind of where we're at. So anyways, 
Uh, but if you want to see um, stuff about the farm and the sheep and more content from me when I'm not having a podcast episode up, uh, you can visit either Instagram or Facebook. Um, so anyways, I hope you have enjoyed today's episode. Happy knitting, happy spinning, and I will see you next time. Bye!